Hey everyone, this is Mr. Everything, and I wanted to kind of give an overview of uh, why you should have a rear view mirror mounted dash cam in your car. Uh, this particular one's the boss cam, but they're all more or less the same. You can kind of tell just because they're all China, probably all same basic uh, template. But this is the one I went with, and being the boss cam, uh, one thing that's different is the camera for the front is here and it slides out this way because I almost everyone has a bigger mirror so you need to slide it out. Most are on this side and it actually works out well for me because I have my radar detector here and I like to keep it as close to this spot as I can and I'm trying to do this with the this end to kind of keep the exposure so that's why I'm keeping the, the sunshade in. And uh, you can see I have my uh, GPS, mine comes with the GPS, I mounted it there, I routed it up in here and then into there. I'm trying to keep everything to where this doesn't fall out. And uh, this one uses USB-C, so that, I don't know if I can reach this or not really, but you, you know what USB-C looks like. So instead of uh, having the traditional hardwire kit, I had to get just a hardwire female 12 volt socket, which took a little more figuring, but that way you, I don't have to, I can just use the factory install. And everything's run up here, but for some reason this one had a ferrite core on it. So I had to a 3M tape it, but it just straps onto your rear view mirror and it's really that simple once you get it in it's no big deal. And as far as the installation goes, again common sense, run it here, run it down here. I have one of these ATA circuits which I've been using with my radar detector for a few years. And what I did is I also added on a Everything's tucked up in here, but uh, that's how I did mine. So this is just a hardwired 12 volt female, and then that just tucks up here. So that's just how I'm doing it. There's really not much point in showing that because it's hard to get up under there. So the next option, you can either lift these up and run your wires in here, or what I did, was just peeled back this weather strip and ran it in the headliner and then here it's just under here into the back and then in, I went to that C pillar because these have a rear camera and uh, in the Grand Marquis which is what this is and probably most Panther cars this just pulls back and a lot of these panels are just pop off and yeah there's a whole bunch of space in here so all my extra cable length is tied up and out of the way and this is the camera it's on, probably hard to pick this up with the exposure, but it's uh, adjustable. You could mount it outside, but then where I'm at, you know, there's a lot of salt and snow. I could picture that getting uh, all over the camera. You'd always have to wipe it off, and maybe it would corrode it, even though it is a weatherproof. You never know. So it's much safer in here. I did want to put it above the defroster lines, so those don't show up in the, in the uh, picture. So it doesn't defrost there, but I haven't really had a problem. And uh, if it rains, especially if you have rain X on, it'll just uh, slide right off. So it's not a big deal once you get up to speed. The water just runs off the the, the rear view or the, the rear window anyway. So there's not much else to see there. You can see it's nice and hidden away. as far as the exterior goes. It's, again, you can see it pretty much is form-fitting to your existing mirror. And the main reason I have it hardwired is with the Fords, all the 12-volt uh, accessories are on all the time, even when the key's off, so that's why it had to be hardwired to a fuse that's only on when the car's on. But it's also cleaner that way. And there you can see it's nice to have both the front and the rear. Yeah, that's the radar detector. I have all the sounds turned off. Again, it's just a general overview. They're all you can this with this particular one you have front and rear at the same time, which I don't that would just be confusing. I don't know why you'd want that. And then you can look at the front. That's just you can view 
what the camera's picking up to make sure it's angled right, but you obviously wouldn't want to drive with it like that. And then back to the rear, and you can adjust this up and down because it's a very wide angle, so you have plenty of playroom. And there are other videos, again, this is more just how I set mine up. Just run all the cables up in here, and it, uh, it's been working well for me. And I don't know about other ones of specifics, but the main problem is in the daylight, when it's really bright out, sunny, th th there's a whole lot of reflection. Now you can adjust this to where the, the, the rear light's not really shining on it, but then you don't have the actual normal mirror function. Because as you can see, I can still see through it without it. So I, I put it to where it still works as a normal mirror and I get the, the display. That's just how I prefer it. But th it does make it then when it's bright out, it washes out because this doesn't get bright enough to keep up. But I've kind of learned where I can keep both on or if it would be to where it's too washed out, you can just turn it off and use it that way. And at this particular boss can, I think they said it has more of a treated or um, tinted uh, glass to help mitigate some of the glare, but it's pretty much, uh, there's people that say useless in the sunlight, but I don't mind it. I'll just shut it off. And this setting is kind of useless too. You can't put, pick it up on camera, but since this is an LCD, the backlight's on even though this is all it is, so it's still hard to see this. It's easier to see in the camera, but in real life, it's there's still too much backlight to make it visible. And of course you can view your front and rear. I have, I think it's a 64 gigabyte card in here because the SD cards are so cheap now. I think you get nine hours of front and back uh, 1080p footage. That's just fine for me. I think most of them are more or less the same. And I also hooked it up to the reverse lights. Now these lines are really arbitrary because I've tried to run uh, a tape measure along the side of the car out like 16 feet. I think that's how long this car is. And it was completely different. So the best luck I've had is just if you're in a parking lot, pull up in front of the space and try and line it up with those lines or even at like a nice tight uh, two lane road or something that's marked like trying to get it in between those lanes at a stoplight or something. But it's really arbitrary. You really don't need it. But I just like how it automatically aims the angle down so you don't have to do it yourself. And I'll show you how I did that. So since I wanted to do an interior camera mount, again, it's very optional. You don't have to hook the wire up, but I just did anyway. Mine, uh, it, since I have the cable ties all in there, you only get like two feet maybe of that little tiny thin red wire. So I extended it to, I think all they had was 18 gauge black wire and that black's a little more concealed and then just you can imagine just to route it however you want you might need something to push up in here to guide it and then you'll need either your uh, if you have a repair manual or a more popular car you can probably just google it and then you'll splice it into the reverse lamp positive for this camera you connect to the positive and that way you don't have to get full around testing if you know what color the manual says, and that's how you can get the automatic um, reverse function. So again, when it's powered off, you can see it still works fine. So to me, it just checks all the boxes. It was only around $100, and then I had to pay for the SD card, the uh, extension wire, which is cheap for the rear um, wire, and then the uh, hard wire 12 volt socket and that was the most confusing thing was just trying to wire that up properly but aside from that it's pretty easy to install these again you can get the full functionality of a front camera a rear camera the somewhat of that parking lines assist i don't know how great that is but uh, some other features built in this one has the gps for speed and stuff like that and it is accurate but more importantly it just gives you some peace of mind for all the crap drivers out there so you have front rear um, you know recordings of everything going on and it does help a lot with night driving and that wide angle for the rear camera is nice gets you a bigger vision of what's behind you so I think all in all it's really good just kind of showing it for me for about a hundred dollars 
really w worth it for any car. You can hook these up and get them up and running. So hopefully that helped you out, gives you some ideas and tips on how I set mine up and some options for how you could do this on your car because it is highly recommended. So thanks for watching and see me in the next one.